Where I got my work ethic from was the hours I had to spend learning this. When you sit down and you're not smart, and you have a disability, yeah. and you still want to be at the top of your class, I didn't want to just get by. When I realized that I can learn through hard work, and I can beat the valedictorian in school, but I got put in 10 hours more a day mm -hmm. than he does. You know what kind of strength comes from that? When you're sitting down, that guy that, that valedictorian studied for an hour, and you know I caught you. I caught you, but I have the work ethic to catch you. That's where David Goggins got really invented. Yeah. Was at a kitchen table with 20 spiral notebooks that were empty. And then three months right later, yeah. they were full. And when you can go through that, I still have them in my storage unit. You go through these spiral notebooks of your life and you realize this is how I learned. This is unbelievable. There's no miles. It's not about the miles. It's that, having a discipline every day to say, for me to learn this one math problem, it's gonna take me 10 hours. And that's where it, and you realize through hard work, no matter how badass they are, but that's the part people don't wanna dive into. Hey, what does Ryan Seacrest, Tom Cruise, Oprah, Steven Spielberg, Donald Trump, Joan Rivers, Warren Buffett, Gordon Ramsay, Michael Jordan, Kobe, Tim Tebow, they all have one major thing in common, dude. These people hammer. They beat it to death, okay? Look at Tom Cruise, man. Look at his career. He works constantly. So look, you want to get your work ethic so high that people actually admire you. I'm going to ask you a question right now. Because of your unbelievable work ethic. If you can't answer yes to that, man, you're not gonna get in that top 10%. You gotta get at the top. People need to know you for one major thing first. He works, he produces. The guy's there every day, the guy's pushing and shoving. Because the truth is, no matter how good your ideas are, how good your art is, or how good your skill set is, if you're not working, man, if you're not vibrating at a frequency that people say, my God, how does that guy do all that? If you're not vibrating at that rate, 10X levels, massive action, tremendous work ethic that's just a muscle now and it's, it's just a discipline in your life and it's a way, it's a normal way that other people think is abnormal. Look, if you're not working at that level, you're not gonna make it. Get your work ethic in, man. It's the American way, work ethic. What I could control was my work ethic. You've heard me speak many times about outworking everybody, but I think that just feels good when we hear it, but most people don't take it seriously. If you think that I have a little bit of success in my life, I can tell you what I attribute it to. Yes, self-confidence, yes, mindset, visualization, goals, all the things I talk about all the time. Listening skills, influence, energy transfer, how to be happier, all of that stuff applies. When you get to winning, for me, it's come down to maxing out. And what maxing out means is you do one more at least than you think you're capable of. So when you're done, whatever you're doing, whether it's at the gym or phone calls or meetings, or in sports, one more shot, one more throw, one more swing of the golf club or the baseball bat. The separator is for the winners, they do one more. I'm addicted to one more. And so I want your mantra going forward to be one more. What does that look like if we're working out? That means when we're in the gym and we say, I'm gonna do five sets of 10, I'm crazy. Like I'm a psycho, because I wanna win. I wanna be somebody, I wanna separate. I wanna compete. And the way I do that isn't with my giftedness because I wasn't born with a bunch of gifts, and I think gifts are crap. I think for the most part, gifted people struggle in life because things come easy to them. I like that things haven't come easy for me in my life. I like they don't have natural talents in every area. And maybe you like that about you too. Maybe you've looked at yourself all your life and thought, man, I don't have that natural beauty or that natural talent or this gift for creativity or intellect or humor. I don't have any of those things. But what I got is I will outwork you. And so at the gym, one of the things I focus on, they say it's five sets of 10. When I'm at 10, I go one more, bam, 11. If I'm running on the treadmill and it's a 45 minute run, I never finish at 45. I always go one more minute, 46. If I'm at the office and I'm supposed to make 25 phone calls that day, when I'm at the end of the day, I always do one more. If I've got meetings, I always do one more. My mantra for three decades in business has been one more. What do I do when I'm broken. When I'm broken, I relish it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use it.
because if I'm broken, then I just found my limitations. And until I know what my limitations are, how can I push them? How can I get better? But once I see it, once I feel it, once I see where I was broken, then I can attack that weakness. I can fill in that gap. I can reinforce that breach. If you break, it means it's time to fortify your will to make it stronger. There's all kinds of different ways to break. You can break physically, you can break mentally, you can break your heart, you can break your spirit, and none of those are fun. And all of those are gonna leave a mark. But the mark that they leave can be the mark of victory or can be the mark of defeat. Because every time you break, and in every way that you break, while it's a chance, it's definitely a chance for you to give up and for you to just to fall apart. But there's also opportunity. There's opportunity to get stronger and get smarter and get faster and get tougher and get more stable and get more resilient and get better. When you break, you have the opportunity to show the world, the whole world, what you are really made of. So, so if you break, if, if you break, the fight isn't over. In fact, if you break, the fight is just beginning. And as you crawl up and out of that dismal and wretched place, covered, and you're covered in blood and sweat and dirt and filth as you rise above what you were. And as you take the form of of who you are supposed to be, you will see that in the very act of standing up, in the very act of fighting on, you will become and you will remain unbroken. I'm not saying to put yourself down. I'm saying listen to the truth. And the truth isn't in the 20%. The truth is in this other part of your brain saying, look, man, you're wasting a bunch of percentage here. We have 80 more percent that we're not tapping into because in this other 80 percent is suffering, pain, failure, 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 self-doubt, darkness, and then a whole bunch of light. But to get to this light, you got to go through all of this shit. So. A lot of us know that. I can get over here, but over here, man, this is much better because I gotta go through this journey that is not fun. This, this from 20 to 100%, this shit in, the, in between is not fun. So we decide to live over here. So everybody goes, how do you do that? You know exactly how to do that. You know exactly, it's, it's not a magic trick. There's nothing I talk about in that book that's a magic trick, it's all back down to a very primitive mindset of, of we just have to do. It's like breathing. Breathing becomes normal. Like we don't even know that, that, that we're doing it. That's how you have to live your life. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says, no, you just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you wanna go, the amount of pain involved, I'm not saying physical, I'm not saying you gotta break yourself off. The amount of mental pain of how many times you're gonna have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. It's gonna be, it, it, there's gonna be more times you do something that, that you don't wanna do than you are gonna wanna do it. And that's, that, that's your new norm. So then it's like breathing. And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't want to live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. So if you really want it, you realize what trying is and what trying is not.